Hey guys, Nathan Brandon Masters. I've been watching a whole lot of videos about the controversies over AI art. Uh, the first thing that occurred to me is that I'm incredibly late to all of this. Uh, this stuff started apparently about five months ago, and I guess the first AI comic book came out about a year ago. <laughs> Uh, and, you know, it wasn't great, but it was done. So I'm incredibly late to a lot of this. But one thing I do notice just listening to all of this is that democratization of anything is a lie, especially when we talk about democratization of art. Because what I'm learning pretty much is that people claim they want democratization of things, but they really don't. Because when you democratize anything, the people who actually do it are threatened. Starting with just this, YouTube. You do YouTube, well, this is a threat to legacy media. And I mean, if you've been on YouTube for a while, you know that YouTube is a threat to legacy media. Legacy media hates YouTube unless they can try to monetize it for themselves. They hate it. One of the reasons that, in my opinion, legacy media isn't as harsh to YouTube as it used to be is because a lot of those legacy organizations get, you know, they get some, they get a little bit more leeway on YouTube. So YouTube gives them greater uh, access than they actually do us, the YouTubers. So legacy media gets a little bit of, of you know, a little bit of a push on the platform. But when it comes to democratization of art, it's kind of like free speech. Everybody claims they want free speech until the person that they don't like is speaking. Then it's kind of like, mm, I don't want that. And, and let me be clear, when I say free speech, I mean constitutional free speech, not whatever lunacy you came up with in your mind. I'm talking about what the Constitution actually states as free speech. Okay, so let's, you know, before lunacy breaks out, let's just be clear about what's, what's really real. I'm talking about what the Constitution states as free speech. But that is the free speech I stand, I stand for, and that's the free speech a lot of people claim they stand for until the person they don't like is speaking. Uh, organizations like Free Press and even the ACLU, which back in the day were notorious for standing up for free speech even when it wasn't popular, and today they're like, nah, everybody don't need to speak, which I understand 100% why they feel that way. The problem is their job, their literal job is to not feel that way. But that's neither here nor there. Going back to the democratization of art, everybody's down for that until it stops being beneficial to one party or the other who has power in that sector. This is the same thing that happened with filmmaking this is the same thing that happened with a lot of things when it became democratized, which means everyone can do it. Again, going back to YouTube, everyone can make a YouTube video. All they gotta do is, you don't even have to get a camera now. You can, get your, you can do it on your cell phone. Cell phones are that good now. You can record your, and there's a lot of people who make YouTube videos with just their cell phone. So yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a lot going on. And the thing with AI art is that it does indeed create a form of democratization of art. And that's never been done before in this way, where people who can't draw can now actually draw, and, or at least can have something to create their ideas. This brings me to the whole point of the artist publisher. I mean, this has been going on since the early 2000s when print on demand started happening and it became, you know, back in the day you had to do a thousand copies and that was going to cost you at least a thousand dollars off the top. And that was for a black and white comic. So, you know, a color comic was at least 3G and, and that was the small order of comics. So now you got print on demand, you can order a certain amount of books and you know, you can take those books to the con or you can sell them on your website or something like that. So those that that's a thing that can be done. Now, you have people like me who stand behind those things. Yes, I stand behind freedom of speech. I stand behind democratization of art. But I'm self-aware enough to know that I stand behind those things because they benefit me. 
uh, you know, freedom of speech benefits me. A lot of my content is, you know, I won't say it's not safe for work, but it's it's mature stuff, okay? There's a little bit of NSFW stuff going on there. And as far as democratization of art, I am an artist publisher, so that benefits me as well. Most of the times when people aren't on the right side of history, it's because being on the right side of history doesn't benefit them. And when I say the right side of history, I mean the stuff that we all claim we believe in. Democracy, free speech, democratization of this, democracy... It's all bull crap, but we claim we believe in it. And many of us believe in it because it benefits us. There's a lot of people, hell, look at the government right now. A lot of people in the government claim they believe in that stuff. And they actively work against it. Even though they claim they believe in it, they can even create a whole circus around the idea that they believe in these things while literally going against the very foundations of those things. So I get it, okay? I get it. I, I'm not, like, like I said, I'm self-aware enough to know what's real and what's BS. The thing about it is the democratization of art really benefits people who didn't have money to pay artists in the first place. It doesn't benefit Marvel or DC to use AI art in the way a lot of people who simply can't afford to pay an artist would. It just doesn't benefit them. They have the money to pay artists who people actually want to see and people will pay for their artwork. They'll pay to see this artist on a book. If you're a fan of comics, you know what I'm saying is true. DC just did a book called uh, The Deadly Duo. It's Batman and the Joker hunting down uh, a guy that's out there impersonating, well, it's not really a guy, it's, it's, a, it's a long story, but it's they're hunting down someone who's uh, impersonating the Joker. But the issue is, one of the reasons I bought that book was because Mark Silvestri was drawing it. And that is someone that I love their art and they've influenced me for years. I love their stuff. That's one of the reasons I bought that book. And in my heart of hearts, if I had that kind of money, Victor Locke Demon Hunter would be drawn by Mark Silvestri. I mean if he was willing to draw. But nobody knows me. I'm not a famous artist. I'm not even a famous YouTuber. Uh, there was a time I had like a, a decent amount of people, but realistically, I'm not a famous guy. So my concept is actually more important than me or throwing my name on something. So yeah, you know, I just did a comic book, put it out, it's on Indiegogo right now, and I enjoyed it. I'm very honest about it. I had a lot of fun doing it, and yeah, I want to sell it because it's still my concept, whether people like that or not. It's still mine. The proof of that is that my original version of the story is already out there. It seems like the people who a lot of people are afraid of are the people who couldn't afford these services in the first place. I'm not going to sit here and say, uh, you know, no jobs are going to be lost. That would be a lie. Like a lot of those spot art jobs, like someone that just do spot art, some of those jobs are probably going to go by the wayside, just honestly. I think concept art is kind of safe because uh, I think a lot of people have the wrong idea about what concept art is. Concept art is, is like really in depth. It's not, you know, oh, it's this nice piece of art on uh, art station or deviant art. It's a little bit more in depth than that. Now, I have the benefit that I learned to draw. And I literally learned to draw specifically so I could create my own comic books and eventually turn them into movies. And this was years before the Marvel Cinematic Universe and all that. I had that stuff in my mind years ago when I was a kid. In fact, I never wanted to work for Marvel or DC or any of those companies. I always wanted to do my own stuff. Maybe Image because of the fact it was an indie-focused company, but couldn't afford it. And YouTube came along. I actually did do a film based around the original version of Epitaph, Bread, and Salt. And uh, I had some things going, actually. But the fact of the matter is, none of that stuff actually ended up being something I could afford to live off of. And, uh, you know, products I could, I could produce consistently. And that's where things became, uh, you know, become problematic 
because I do want to produce my stories and have people kind of have an idea to say to other people, if you can't afford an artist, you don't get to produce your art where you don't get to control people like that. And that's one of the big reasons AI art is scary to a lot of people. It's not about copyright or any of that stuff. The precedents have already been set. It's really about the loss of control. And that loss of control is felt by a lot of us every time. I mean, you think you're feeling loss of control because of the art stuff. I'm feeling a little bit of loss of control because of the chat G, or the chat, chat GPT or whatever it is. Yeah, because at my core, I'm a writer more so than I am an artist. So I'm kind of looking at that like, mm -hmm, I don't know. But I do believe in the democratization of art and that includes writing. So one day, Chat GPT might be able to be a better writer than me. But I have to let that be if I am to be consistent, which I know a lot of people don't care about today. It's me, me, me. And when the thing I claim I believe in doesn't benefit me anymore, I gotta, you know, I gotta, I gotta change it up. So should art be democratized or should it be gatekept? Because you can't do both. Now, I personally know, you know, I've said, hey, there needs to be some gatekeeping, but that's usually talking about fandoms, like talking about certain types of fandoms and things. Yeah, I, I'll tell you flat out, I think some of that stuff needs to be gatekept. But as far as you creating something of your own, eh, no. No, you, you get to do your thing and we have to compete. That's the thing. I got to get either my stuff needs to be good enough or I got to market it enough to get your attention to buy it. That's what it is. And either you jump on that or you don't. And, you know, you can't force people to work the way you want them to work because they're not going to do it. Not in America. Now, I don't know people listen to a different country uh, from different countries. I don't know what y'all do, but here in America, you can't do that because people will tell you to go F yourself. That's just facts. And you know, and if you've been living in America, you know how that works. So other than that, guys, you guys take it easy. Uh, if you are interested in AI comic, I have one on Indiegogo right now. Link is in the description. It's called curse risen. It's a retelling of my original epitaph bread and salt story. Talk to you guys later. Awesome.